Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a lino cutting and printing class. So if you've never used um, lino before, I'm going to start by just talking a little bit about it and kind of the artwork that you can produce using lino. So lino is a type of printing uh, where on a piece of lino sheet we're going to cut out our design um, and then we can print it onto papers. I've also printed onto fabric before. So there's a variety of things you can do with it and you can make as many prints as you want. So that's what's quite exciting about it. Um, here are some ones that I've done before. So you can get like a little idea of what you can produce. So you get some really kind of cool effects using lino. And as you can see, everything's negative. So what we're going to dig out on our pieces of lino is what will be white essentially on your paper and you kind of roll ink over it so anything rolled onto here so anything that isn't dug out will then be black as your ink but you can make pretty cool designs um, I've also done things where I've layered it over some watercolour paper to add a little bit of colour into your lino so that can be pretty fun um, so there's loads of kind of things you can do. Uh, I've done prints onto t-shirts like that, which is quite cool, and onto cushion covers, which you can see I've started to colour in here. Um, but yeah, so it's super relaxing as well. It can be very therapeutic to kind of carve away at the lino while you create your designs. Um, but yeah, there's a couple things to consider while painting. So here are the examples from these linos, that, the prints that I was just showing you. So this is what the lino itself actually looks like. Uh, here's a little leaf. And there we have this design. Um, as you can see, they're a little bit kind of black from the lino ink that stained them, but that doesn't really matter. So yeah, then these are there for me to make prints of these whenever I want. So that's the main kind of fun bit about lino. And what you need to do lino is a lino kit, which consists of your lino sheets. So I've got two sizes, the smaller and the large. I do always, always prefer to do things large, and especially if you're beginning, the larger one's better. Um, just because then you're not having to worry so much about tiny fine details while it while you're beginning it can be a little bit difficult to control the cutting blade so I've got paper here to do my printing on and I've also just drawn out a little design of what I'm going to do which is kind of like a little whale shark uh, this is your guard so you can use this while you're starting out to kind of give support as you're cutting um, some people like to use them, others don't. I personally don't, but while you're beginning it can be quite good and handy. I've got my little pencil and a rubber, just for kind of drawing out designs, and my actual cutting tool and blades. So with the Zilla pack, you get five blades, um, all in different sizes, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, so that's really handy. And then I've got my roller, tray, and ink. So the ink on this is very thick and goes very far. So you don't have to use much of it. You'll get a lot out of this one tube um, and it's oil-based. So that means when we're cleaning, we want to use kind of paper towel and I just use some vegetable oil to wipe up the oil rather than wash it. Because washing it isn't going to do anything, the water doesn't penetrate the oil. So to start with, I'm going to just show you some of these blades. So I'm going to use this little smaller sheet of lino and just make some cuts. So you can see the different sizes of the blades that you get. So I've got, I'm going to stick the largest one in. So there is a little, tool you use to eject the blades, you just poke it in the back like that and the blade pops out the front. But equally if you're careful with your fingers you can just push it in and out. So I've got the largest blade on here now. 
and this is going to scoop away most of the lino. So you always, you don't want to ever cut with your fingers in front of the blade in case you slip, you're going to cause an accident. So always cut with your fingers to the side or behind the blade. And I hold it kind of just like a pencil. So you've got your forefinger here that can create the pressure. And what you want to do is you just scoop into the blade so you're placing pressure and you can go down and create the line. Ease off the pressure at the end and you get this kind of little shape and as you see inside your blade there's your bit of liner that you cut away. So here this is the fattest blade, I'm just going to do another one there. So you control how much lino you scoop away. So if I take this one off, I'll go down to the next size. You'll then see the kind of difference there. So a slightly thinner line. There go. And then our next size, which is this one. So you can really see there that is a lot thinner. Doing a couple of lines of each. So depending on what kind of details you want to get is which blade you choose. But to start with it does take a little while to get used to using the blade. It's all about the amount of pressure you're putting down. So you don't want to push too hard and push too much pressure or else you're going to you might end up coming through the lino and also you don't need to scoop out a massive amount it is just a small amount like that so hello everyone who's joining me and yeah so you can see there how they engrave out and then also you have this little tool here which is just a flat blade and that's good for kind of just getting little carves. So carving little, you can like cross out with this, but it just adds a bit of texture to the lino. So, you know, these are gonna give actual marks, whereas this just adds a little bit of texture. So you can kind of do some cross hatching with these. a little bit different from the other blades because you're more just scoring the surface rather than peeling the liner out. But if you've never done much liner before, creating, having a little test sheet and having a little bit of a go with the blades is a good way to start because you want to gain some control when using the lino. So to start with you want to just do kind of simple shapes, then you can start to have a little go at doing curved edges. So here I'm now doing some more curves, which you kind of have to be a bit more controlled with it. Quite patient and there we go. So then you can get some kind of different shapes going on. Um, and as you can see at the end, I've got a nice finish which you get from so you're pushing in to begin and then as you come off to end you edge off the pressure and kind of let it just flick away and you get those kind of pointed ends rather than having just a stump that you then have to pick away at. Um, to do circles you can also do like little circles which I'll be doing later for my design you can just create little circle imprints like that. Easiest way to do that is to put this in and actually move your lino around or move the blade around, depends what you find more comfortable or kind of do a bit of both. And you can get like little circular dots. So to start with a little bit of practice you're cutting just to get used to using the blade. Make sure that you can do different shapes and circles. So Kind of like drawing, it's all about getting your arm and your hand in the right position. So you want to kind of either move the lino around or move your arm around. 
might want to stand up from your seat so you can kind of get the right angle but you can really achieve some really nice smooth shapes some curly whirlies and all sorts so yeah but it does take a little bit of a while to get the hang of using that cutting tool so you could probably go through a whole couple sheets of line of just practicing control um, and things before you start to actually work on a design but if I were to then print this lino everything I've engraved would be white like my sheet or you can always do it on coloured paper so whatever colour you choose and anything that I haven't carved out will be black from the ink so as you can see with these linos what I've chosen to do is cut away the background so I've got that white background with just this kind of shape that I've worked on in the middle. Um, so that's something to think about, whether when you're doing your design, do you want to have it within a rectangle? Or do you want to cut it out? Do you want that black background? Or would you prefer to keep it as a white background? So when we talk about designing, first of all, what you want to do is have your paper out and think about a little bit of a design. So I'm going to do a kind of whale shark figure and I want to add all these little dots on and then I'm going to have the background black. So I'm going to go right to the edges on my lino. So I've done this design by drawing, first of all, around my sheet of lino so I know what size I'm working on. When you draw onto lino, you can't rub out. So if you like draw a pencil mark on it, it doesn't actually rub out. As you'll see, the rubber kind of just goes all stained on the sheet. So you want to sketch out your design first. Make sure you have it ready here. Then if you're good at drawing, you can freehand and draw it onto your lino. If you're not so good at drawing, then you'll want to trace uh, the image or you can cut out your design and use it as a template. So I've just gone for some simple kind of curved edges and this is going to be like a little whale shark well we'll see so I'm just going to cut that out to make sure I get it perfect onto the lino I'm just going to use it as a little template but really if you're starting off to begin with you don't want to worry too much about doing an over complicated design um, you can use household objects to create different shapes you could use circles kind of triangles square um, just kind of keep it simple while you're practicing, but you'll see so many people do some extraordinarily detailed linos. And like I said, it is very therapeutic and very relaxing to sit and carve away at your lino print. So just cutting around this and then I'm going to get to cutting and then we'll move on to the printing aspects. So. Uh, the lino ink can be quite messy and it doesn't come off of your clothes. So just to be aware of that when we do start the printing. So this will be my printing paper, which I'm just using ordinary scrap paper here. Um, but you can, once you've got your process a bit better, move on to some nice cards and things like that. So I'm just going to draw around my whale shark. I think I'll have him. Then you want to kind of decide, do I want it to an angle? No, I think I'll keep it kind of straight like that. So just doing this the easiest way, using my little template here, so then I don't have to keep rubbing out on my lino and, you know, making mistakes. So the lino kit I'm using today is Zilla Art Supplies. They are 
currently doing next day deliveries and still taking orders. So if you did want to get into Lino. So I'm just gonna add a couple of little details in. Yeah, and the rest of it I'll kind of just do by memory or the little dots. But yeah, there you have my little whale shark design. So to begin with, I now want to think about what blade to use when doing my cutting. So you want to think how thick do you want your outline? And I want it to be fairly thick, but definitely not the fattest. So if you're, it's handy to kind of have this little hit thing here, so then you can think, hmm, what kind of size do I want the line? So I'm gonna go the kind of medium size. So I wanna make sure I've got the right blade in place, which is this one. And then I'm just gonna to start to cut away that outline. So whatever I'm cutting out is going to be white. So it's a little bit difficult to get your head around that because it's, it's negative images. So you kind of want to think, what do you want to be white and what do you want to be black? But I think this whale shark image kind of suits having the lines in white and all the dots in white, like on a whale shark and the black is the kind of dark ocean. That's what I'm kind of going for here. Yeah, you can see as you're doing it, you've got to kind of keep a steady control of the flow of the blade. So make sure you're moving the lino around. to make it comfortable to get the right cuts. There we go. So I'm sure you can probably all hear my very squeaky chair that I have. <laughs> so I'm going to have this as kind of like a finishing point. I'm not going to fully join the design in. So as you can see, I'm using my forefinger to push on the blade to control the amount of pressure when cutting. So it's my basic outline. Now we're going to add a couple of the details. So I think I'm going to change blade here. I'm going to go down a size to this one. So these little wooden handles are pretty nice compared to some other plastic ones. So that's kind of the spine of the whale shark. Like that. Then I'm going to add all these little details. And you can make it as detailed or as simple as you want. You could even start off with by just doing like a few lines. But it's all about just taking control of the blade. Which is easier said than done. And you'll find, especially to begin with, it's a lot more difficult, but it does get easier as you go along. And then I'm gonna add all these little circles in. 
So to do that. Going to engrave your holes. You'll find some designs work really well on linos and others not as much. All depends on your kind of skill set and how confident you are with drawing your shapes and and it's pretty fun and therapeutic just to peel away once you have control. So as you can see, I'm building up all those little circles. So what am I using for the circles? I just have this, I'm using the, one of the smaller blades um, and literally I'm just digging in a point and then moving the lino around and scooping out the little pieces of lino and that's how you get a circle. Sometimes I don't even move the lino, I actually just twist the handle around and it scoops out and you can see that's created those little holes in there. So, because this is a whale shark, we have lots of little holes, so I have quite a while to go here. So you can really, once you kind of get used to scooping away, Comes quite simple. Like so so you kind of keep going until you're satisfied with your design. If I want this to be an actual whale shark, I've got lots of circles to do. Something like that. So when you think about it, it's all just about digging away at the lino. Everything you do is engraving and creating shapes and building up your design. Which is the kind of fun part of it. It's quite different from quite a lot of printing. And once you've made your lino, you can keep it forever. You see? So I'm going to get a bit more kind of loose with these circles now. Everything I'm carving out is going to be white. Everything that's left will be black from my ink. Now you can get different coloured inks, I just have black, um, but it has to be ink. You can't use acrylic paint to print with this or anything like that, it's just not thick enough. The ink is oil based and that's so it spreads around the lino. But 
but you see how kind of quickly you can once you get going but like I said it takes a little while just to get used to using the blades and to get in that kind of control but once you get going you'll be off so I'm just going to add a couple little lines in I want this to have quite a lot of texture Going and going. And as you can see, all my little bits of lino around start to kind of build up, make a bit of a mess. But Add a few more little lines in. So I'm going really thin and delicate with some of these lines. So if anyone's done much lino before, I'd love to like see some of your designs. If you want to send any of your prints over. Or if you've got any questions, you can go ahead and ask me anything. change blade now and get some different sized circles so I think I'm going to go down to the smaller blade and try see if I can produce some smaller circles so turn that off go for this one which is my smaller blade although my circles will probably be quite similar in size just because of the action of getting a circle it's hard to get really tiny weeny ones So I think I'm nearly done, good few more circles to do, but then I will be ready to print, so I'm going to do a little few down here. I'm kind of just going to dig out little specks as well. So onto the printing process, we want to just squeeze a little bit of your ink into your tray. You just need a little dollop, you'll find the ink does go a long way. And then we're just going to roller it on to the roller. So you just want to take some time to make sure it's evenly spread on the roller. Cool. 
And then once you're evenly spread, you're going to roll it onto the lino that you've just cut out. You want to make sure you get it nice and even right up to the edges if you want to have that kind of black box. ready to go. I just want to take a little piece of newsprint and I'm just going to move the lino onto a fresh piece there because I have got some of the ink onto that piece so I don't want that to um, transfer onto my printed paper. So here we go. You're going to take the paper. You always paste the paper onto the lino. You don't bring the lino onto the paper. I'm going to go ahead and just place it on then you can smooth it down. So lots of people use the back end of a spoon or a clean roller, but I just use my hands to go ahead and give it a rub, make sure that the ink is really connecting with the paper. take it up and see what our print looks like. Cool, so not too bad, quite cool. And as you can see, it's a reverse. So that's something to consider when you're doing your design. Um, if you're doing any lettering or anything, you do have to write it in reverse because obviously it's printed on, you get the reverse um, shape. And like you can see, everything we cut out is now in white and everything that remains is in black. So your first couple of prints, you can see it's a little bit um, patchy. Uh, if you do want it really kind of black, then you need to add a bit more ink and you'll find that your first couple of prints will be a bit patchy because the ink needs time to kind of set into the lino. So by about your fifth print, you'll find that you get more of a consistent black coloration. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do another one. And this ink won't dry on your palette there for a good, um, about 20 hours-ish. It will start to dry in by about 20 hours, but if you did want to leave it overnight, leave it for 12 hours and you can come back to it in the morning, it would still be um, wet ink because it's oil based. It does take a little bit longer to dry. And of course you can keep this lino and make as many prints as you like. And I'm kind of just doing it very rough here using rough paper to transfer it. But if you then wanted to make a more finalized piece and do a nice piece of card or something, you can create a registration sheet to make sure you match it up and that you get your lino in the exact place. Uh, more information on how to create that is on some of our other videos or on our blog channels. So if you head to the Zilla website, you can see all the guides and you can read a bit more about that. But to start with, that kind of is, isn't is really necessary. It's more about practice. You know, if you're beginning out with this, it's more about getting the right designs and making sure that you're used to the printing process before worrying about doing it really straight and neat. So here we go again. Just add the paper on and give it a rub. Yeah. 
You want to be careful not to get too any ink on your hands because as you can see it will transfer to your paper and it can be quite messy to wipe off your hands being oil based. It doesn't just wash off with water as easy as like an acrylic or something. There you go, you can see we're getting a little bit more now of a darker kind of finish but it can take a couple of attempts if you do want it pure back but it does look quite nice to have that um, effect with it. But yeah, that's basically the printing process. Um, to clear up, you want to get some paper towel, um, pour a little bit of um, cooking oil, so I just use like vegetable oil or something, and you want to wipe away the ink. So rather than washing it, you need to wipe it all away first using the oil. The oil will um, remove the paint. Um, but like I said, you've got a good few hours if you want to leave it and kind of come back to it a bit later before you clear up. But yeah, oil and tissue is a good way to clean it and then afterwards you can go ahead and give it a rinse if you want. Um, but yeah, that was the uh, lino cutting and printing process. Just kind of like the basics there to get you started and thinking about your designs a little bit. Um, next week I'll be doing watercolour which is super fun, nice and colourful, um, so tune in for then if you're interested in that. Like I say, Zeela are doing next day delivery, so if you wanted to order any art supplies, then you can go ahead and do that. If you do that before two, you'll get next day delivery. So, awesome, stay safe and stay creative, everyone.